for everybody to write down is 1-800-774-5255. And, but if you go to 2 Kings, I want you to turn with me, and we're going to look at some scripture because I want to talk to you about Gehazi. Gehazi was the servant to Elisha. And uh, if you have your Bible, turn to 2 Kings chapter, let's look at chapter 8, verse 5. I want to read this, and then I'm going to start building a foundation, laying a foundation for what I'm going to be talking about. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My Lord, O king, this is the woman and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. Now, let's go on back in history just a little bit further. You know, and you should know, and if you don't know, that Elijah came by and anointed Elisha. You know, I mentioned earlier that Elijah went the wrong way. He went 180 miles down to Mount Hor when God told him, eat, or the angel of God said, eat and prepare yourself because you got a long journey. Well, Elijah got up and went south. And when he went 180 miles, 40 days and 40 nights, he got there. And the angel of God said, why are you here? Or God spoke to him and said, why are you here? He said, well, Lord, you told me to come. God said, I didn't tell you to come down here. He spoke to him three times. Why are you here? So Elijah learned a lesson. Stop and listen to God. Stop, pray, and listen. That's what God told me years ago. Elijah went back to where he was at outside of Jerusalem and went on to Damascus. And on his way, God said, stop and anoint Elisha. And Elijah asked Elisha, he said, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of your anointing. Anybody can walk up to a river and smote it and tell it to stop and the water stop and back up and walk across on dry ground. He said, I want that anointing. So Elijah told him, said, listen, that's a hard thing, but let me tell you something. If you see me when I'm raptured out, when God takes me out, if you see me, you can have that anointing. So Elisha stuck with him like glue. Elisha stuck with Elijah. And now you know the whole story. As they were walking down the road four or five times, the devil tried to separate them, but Elisha stuck to him like glue. They got down this road. They was walking down this two-route dirt road, and they was walking side by side. And all of a sudden, they looked down the road, and here come a fiery chariot, horses and fire, and here come a whirlwind behind it. Now, they were walking one beside the other, so they had to depart. One had to go one way, and one had to go the other way. And the fiery chariot came right between them. Now, if it had been me, I would have been looking at the fiery chariot, and I would have been looking at the whirlwind. But Elisha, he kept his eyes on Elijah because he knew what God had said. If you see me when I'm taken out, he said, but you ain't getting out of my sight. And he kept his eyes on Elijah. Elijah, And the whirlwind caught Elijah and took him up and started swirling him around. He was going up to heaven. Now, the, uh, I, I can see Elisha now laying on the ground over there, looking under the chariot of fire, and the horse is going by. Him. Here comes a whirlwind. He looks up and he says, I'm still looking. I see you. <laughs> I, there, ain't no, there ain't no scripture for all this. But he said, I see you. You ain't left me yet. And I, all of a sudden, Elijah said, yeah, you sure did. Here. And he dropped his mantle, his robe. And as he dropped that mantle, Elisha caught it. Elisha went down the river and said, let's see if this thing works now. <laughs> he walked up to the Jordan River and he smote it. And the water stopped. And he went across on dry ground. Now this same Elisha now has been called before the king. The king says, what's this I hear about? Not Elisha. Ge- Elisha had a servant named Gehazi. Gehazi is called before the king. And the king says, what's this I hear about Elisha doing all these miracles? In my land. He said, let me tell you about these miracles. He didn't tell them all of them, but he said, let me tell you about some of them. He said, I can remember when my master 
came into a town. And as a poor widow woman, and all she had was a little bit of oil left in a container. She had no money. She had sons, but she had no money. She had no way of paying her bills. And my master went to her, and he says, what's your problem, woman? And she said, I'm broke. <laughs> and anyway, he said, well, tell your sons to go out and knock on all the doors in the community and borrow a vessel, a container. So she sent her sons out, and they all came back and had all these empty vessels, and he anointed the oil or prayed over the oil. or He said, now pour out the oil into these vessels, and she poured out of her oil into all these vessels. And as she poured out the oil into all these vessels, it filled them all up, and she still had oil. He said, now go sell that oil in the community and pay your creditors, pay your bills. And so she did. Then he said, I can remember when we went to another village and we went into that village and this woman saw us coming into the village and he saw, she saw how we passed through all often and she told her husband, let's build him a place for Elisha to lay down his head. Let's build him a little room on the side of the house here. And so they built a room and he started staying there. And then he called Gehazi and there. Elisha called Gehazi and said, what does this woman need? He says, she's been so good to us. He said, what does she need? And Gehazi said, she's barren. She's never had a child. She'd love to have a son. He said, well, call her in here. So Gehazi said, I went and got the woman and brought her in there and said that I told Elisha right in front of her she wanted a son. And he told the woman, he said, well, in nine months you're going to have a baby. He said, you're going to have that son because God's going to bless you with it. Nine months later, she had a baby. The baby grew up. And as the baby grew up, he was out in the field one day working with his father. And a sickness came upon him. He had a headache. And we can learn about that over in 2 Kings chapter 3 and 4. Chapter 4. Anyway, uh, 418, I believe, in... When he was fully grown, now this is a grown man. He was out in the field working with his daddy, and he started having a headache. And he said, Daddy, I don't feel good. His daddy said, well, go back to the house and sit with your mama until you get feeling better. So the boy went back home, and the woman sitting there, she let him sit down on her knees, and he sat there, and he was resting his head, and he died. Dead on the doornail. He died. And so she picked him up and towed him in there and laid him on the prophet's bed. And Elisha was going into another area. And the woman come flying out the door and said, told one of the servants, said, saddle me an ass, fix me up a, a cart and everything. I got to go. And the husband said, is everything all right? She said, it's all going to be fine. It's all going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Her son laying in there dead. She said, I'm going to go see the man of God. He said, why? It's not the new moon or it's not the Sabbath. Why are you going to go see him? She said, don't you worry about it. You go ahead and do the harvest. I got to go see the man of God. <laughs> I ain't worded like that in the Bible either. But anyway, she went. And when she come, Elisha saw her coming down the road. And he said, Gehazi, go ask her if all is well. He said, lady, is all well? She said, all is well. Her son laying home dead, but he, everything's okay. God's going to take care of that. And she came and she asked Elisha, why did you promise me a son? I didn't ask you for a son. And now he's dead. Why did you do this to me? She started blaming Elisha. She said, well, I'm telling you right now, I'm not leaving here. He said, Gehazi, I'll take my staff and go lay it on that boy. And she said, well, I'm telling you right now, preacher, I'm not leaving. Because you told me that God sent that boy. God didn't send me that boy to take it away. I'm going to stay with you. I ain't going with Gehazi. Elisha and the servant started back. They went back to the house. And Gehazi had gone on before him, and he laid the rod on the boy, and he came back, and he said, it didn't do no good. He said, the boy's still dead. No breath, no life at all in him. So Elisha went in the house, and he laid down across the boy, and he laid there, and he got up, and he walked around, and he went back, and he laid down again, nose to nose, mouth to mouth, head to head, hand to hand, and the boy's body started waxing warm after the second go round. And the boy sneezed seven times. Elisha got him up and said, now go on and eat. Went and told his mama, he said, he's all right. And so now the